Uh, we'll just get started in a, a minute or so while we let everybody in. Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the open house for the pharmaceutical science program. And I'm Christina Chai and I'm the head of department of NUS Pharmacy. Now, uh, if you move to the next slide, Caitlin. If you, I wonder whether you remember the year 2020, this is when uh, the pandemic actually started. You would, uh, you would remember uh, some of the things that I'm showing on this slide over here. But if you, if I were to ask you what is the one thing that you remember, it would probably basically be home-based learning because that's basically the challenge, the greatest challenge that most of us face as academics here in NUS. That was the year 2020. What about the year 2021? In the year 2021, there was um, a light at the end of this very long tunnel, okay? And this was in the form of the vaccines. So when you think about even, you know, the older aunties and uncles, okay, around, they would be able to tell you, you know, that they want uh, the China vaccine versus the Ang Mo vaccine or vice versa, okay? So they may not understand the scientific principles behind it, but nevertheless, they would basically know about vaccines. And then, of course, you would also see uh, the ART kits, which is being used, well, for a lot of us regularly. And you would have also heard in the year 2021 of the potential cures for COVID-19 from the hydroxychloroquine and to the ivermectins. But for real, recently, there is in fact um, a, a drug that was developed by Pfizer that was approved by the Food and Drug Administrator, Administration for the treatment of COVID-19. And of course, what we are living through now is essentially the Omicron wave. Why did I just tell you this? You already know about this. And actually, I wanted to tell you about and remind you about this is because pharmaceutical science basically came to the forefront in the last two years. Before this, you know, people would not have heard unless you're working in the field of Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson. But because of the pandemic, the pharmaceutical industry has in fact come to the forefront as is pharmaceutical science. So, what is the difference between pharmaceutical science and chemistry and biology? They're not the same, right? Because we don't teach in the depth as chemistry and biology. We select the key principles of what you need to know from chemistry and biology in the context of pharmaceutical science. Plus there is more. For example, you have the how a drug is administered, whether it's an injection or whether it's an oral drug, all of that is part of formulation that is not found in the teachings of any other science modules. So there is also about regulatory. So as I've shown over in this slide, you've got the Food Drug Administration, which is an authority in, in the US and there are multiple authorities in Singapore, it's the HSA. So we learn also about regulatory. And of course, there are other issues associated with marketing quality control, and so on. Basically, if this is really the sort of things that you are interested in, that pertaining to pharmaceutical industry, either research or working uh, in the context of all aspects of pharmaceutical industry, then this is basically the program for you. I'm going to uh, introduce to you uh, my colleague, who is the program director, um, of the pharmaceutical science program, uh, Professor Rachel E. She's also my deputy head in research 
and she will be giving you much more information about the program. I hope you enjoy the session and thank you very much for your attention. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the NUS Open House 2022. Thank you, Christina, for that introduction. Uh, let me share uh, my screen now before we move on. Okay. Um, yeah, you have just heard Christina, who is the head of the department. Uh, and uh, myself, I'm Rachel E. Uh, and together, I'm going to introduce to you our team today, together with my colleagues. Uh, some of our faculty have joined us uh, to handle any questions that you have about the, uh, regarding the program. Uh, myself, I'm a formulation scientist. I graduated from NUS uh, with a bachelor in pharmacy and subsequently received my training in, in the States on pharmaceutical science. I will call myself a pharmaceutical formulation scientist. And you have heard Christina, who is, who is herself a very esteemed medicinal chemist, um, having trained uh, in Australia and also uh, received fellowships uh, and trained in Oxford and currently also uh, Alexander von Humboldt Fellow. And together with me is my deputy director, who is a pharmacal epidemiologist, uh, Dr. Yao Wai Ping. Uh, just in the background, trying to answer any questions that you have, uh, and you may freely put it into the chat box, uh, and we will try our best to answer as I go along. Uh, Dr. Yao herself is, uh, has been trained also a pharmacist alumni uh, from NUS, uh, and received uh, her PhD in NUS and uh, a fellow uh, in Harvard School of Public Health. So let's start with the video uh, that we have made for this open house today. Pharmaceutical science. Hashtag pharma. Pharmaceutical science. Your passport to a life-changing, life-saving career. We study the science and technology behind drugs. How they're discovered, developed, tested, manufactured, and regulated. One obvious example, vaccines. You'll experience the life cycle of a drug. Starting with a healthcare challenge, looking for solutions. We synthesize compounds like calcones, which are used in drugs for cardiovascular diseases and stomach cancers. A pharmaceutical science major will take these core modules, and that includes training in the regulatory and business challenges you may encounter during your career. You'll also be exposed to cool technologies in use in industry. Every multi-particulate coating is unique depending on the dosage. These multi-coated pellets go into this. Pharmaceutical scientists gave us weapons to fight smallpox, tuberculosis. It doesn't hurt, does it, that the pharmaceutical industry is booming? If that's where you see your future, start here. So who are we? I'm also very happy actually that uh, Jamie and Ying that you have seen in the video uh, today will be joining us later after my talk to share with you their experiences uh, as a student in the pharmaceutical science program. So uh, we are a department in the Faculty of Science and uh, you might uh, be surprised to find out that uh, we are as old as NUS itself uh, as a School of Pharmacy. We have a history of uh, 117 years and we have a total of 47 faculty members with 26 support staff. Together with the Bachelor of Pharmacy program, uh, there, uh, our student strength is currently at 793 students, undergraduate students, and, and we are supported by an ecosystem of postgraduate students, uh, 127 of them. So you might also want to know that we are the only pharmacy school in Singapore, and naturally the best, and currently we have, uh, we are number one in Asia for the QS ranking for pharmacy and pharmacology and number 12 in the world ranking for pharmacy and pharmacology. So the reason behind this uh, ranking is of course the people itself. Uh, we, uh, if you join our course, you will be uh, educated, supported and mentored by uh, pharmaceutical scientists who have undergone training in the top universities in the world. 
Uh, these are my colleagues that you have seen uh, on, on this slide. And although we are, we are quite uh, lady heavy today, uh, I assure you that it is a quite a gender balanced department in NUS. And um, my colleagues uh, have received uh, PhD training and postdoctoral training in the area of uh, drug discovery and development uh, in the top uh, institutions in the world. And so who are we? Um, as Christina has mentioned just now, that uh, we do not just study biology or chemistry. Uh, we do not necessarily identify ourselves as chemists or biologists, but more accurately pharmaceutical scientists because we are experts in aspects of the science and technology of medical products. So drugs, medicines, medical products form the central pillar of what we do in education and research. Uh, and, but this does not just include drug discovery, it also includes development, manufacture, regulation and utilization of medical products. And together we embrace how medicines work, how safe and effective they are and how they are being brought to the market, the impact on the body, and even the effect on the prevention and, and treatment of disease. And in the Department uh, of Pharmacy, we currently have uh, a number of programs. For the undergraduates, we run uh, our flagship program, which is, which is the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours Program. Uh, this program uh, will lead to uh, a license uh, for uh, students to practice as pharmacists. Uh, for the Bachelor of Science, uh, Pharmaceutical Science Honours, we uh, currently uh, offer it as a first and second major. We started in 2018 uh, as a first major, and I'm happy to say that uh, last year, uh, we have also uh, started to offer it as a second major. And of course, we do have a Pharmaceutical Science uh, minor for students uh, too. Um, so as, as a first major, uh, pharmaceutical science program is a direct admission course offered in CHS. So unlike the other majors whereby you, you have about one to two years to declare, uh, you please remember that pharmaceutical science is a direct admission course, which means that at the point of application, you do have to indicate as, as an isolated choice. Uh, and, and so this might be important uh, uh, note, uh, administrative detail for you to note. And if you're interested in pharmaceutical science as a second major, it is a restricted second major offered in CHS, which means uh, that uh, uh, approval has to be sought uh, from us. Uh, and more importantly, students will have to take a gateway module, uh, which I will mention later in order for you to gain entry into the program uh, for a second major. So as, as you have probably already seen, uh, this is the second year that we're running the CHS uh, curriculum. And it's really uh, a curriculum that allows you to choose your own adventure. We follow the common structure whereby uh, one third of the course curriculum uh, involves taking common, the common curriculum. Another third is provided by the major requirements and the last third is by unrestricted electives. So uh, under major requirements, uh, pharmaceutical science uh, will provide uh, 15 modules that will be relevant uh, to, to the program. And uh, we give uh, advisory for students, uh, whether they are interested to be a versatilist uh, with a single major, uh, or if they would like to um, do a double major under this program, or if they want to be a deep specialist, we do have a suite of uh, courses beyond the 15 modules that students can take in order to study in depth um, the pharmaceutical science. What are the current uh, major entry requirements uh, for pharmaceutical science as a direct uh, admission course? The, the requirements are being stated over here. Uh, what, is, what you have to note is that chemistry is uh, absolutely necessary for application in this program. Uh, biology is not necessary. And uh, over the years, we always have questions about uh, whether um, students without biology will suffer in this course. Uh, and I do have uh, testimonials from students who without biology uh, that they do, uh, they're able to cope with the course because uh, we do uh, provide the foundational knowledge and our um, faculty uh, tries the best to integrate the knowledge for students. So uh, it is not a worry if you do not have biology. 
So as a second major, uh, the requirements are still uh, uh, the same. Uh, you need a foundation in H2 chemistry. Uh, the second requirement which uh, you need to note is that you would have to have a very good pass in the gateway module known as PHS1101, which is called the billion dollar pill, bench to bedside uh, drug development. Now this module is offered uh, every semester uh, and uh, every uh, semester, uh, there will be an application window that will be opened via uh, my edu rec for this restricted second major and students who have done well uh, in this gateway module will be considered for for second major so uh, currently as i mentioned we are established in 2018 and in any words the classes are named by the graduation year so what we have uh, currently is our first batch of students who will graduate this year we started from uh, 28 students, uh, the class of 22, and uh, we have uh, increased in strength year to year. And currently, uh, the latest uh, stu uh, student number is at 59 for the class. Uh, in, in total, we have uh, 89 uh, uh, girls, 59 girls and uh, 86 boys, uh, male and female students. It's pretty much very balanced. And over the years, our integrative uh, grade profile, uh, 10th and 90th percentile, has, has been kept constant at all A's. So it, it is actually quite a highly competitive program. So what is our vision and, and mission? We, we believe uh, firmly uh, in a foundation in bioorganic and medicinal chemistry, hence the requirements of H2 chemistry and human biomedical sciences. Uh, this knowledge would actually form uh, the foundation for our students to understand drug discovery. And in the first year, uh, first and second year, foundation studies uh, uh, contain integrated knowledge. Uh, and um, further on in the degree, students will actually be taught uh, pharmaceutical science niche. And this covers full spectrum of uh, coursework that uh, will inform the students on the drug discovery and the drug development process. We also believe uh, in versatility in our program. And, and this is pretty much soft skills uh, and mindset uh, that we train our students uh, in uh, to enable the high employability in diverse careers. So you may ask, um, so, so the drug discovery process is extremely complicated and complex. What we know uh, usually or um, uh, the glamorous part of it usually is the discovery part of it and the beginning and the end, which is the doctoring part of it. Uh, not many people actually know the development process, which, which, which has been really highlighted and spotlighted during this COVID process. Um, the discovery process is important, of course. Uh, this is the part whereby we talk about uh, target identification, disease identification, the beginning of a small molecule, the beginning of mRNA, how it can be used uh, to, to as a drug, as a vaccine. But there are a lot of other complicated process that needs to be understood before it could go into the market and for the doctor to use. Uh, this part of it, uh, uh, students will definitely learn the course, for example, the manufacture, the formulation design, uh, and, and of course, the clinical trials. So do, do you know what's the difference between Moderna and, um, and uh, the Pfizer vaccine? Do you know that uh, it's not just the mRNA, but it's also all the other active, in, uh, active ingredients and non-active ingredients that are added to the vaccine that is different between the two products. So that gives rise to different reactions in different people. It not necessarily is the drug itself alone. And also during this period, clinical trials, uh, usually it takes 10 to 15 years to develop a drug, but have you ever wondered why it only takes one to 1.5 years for, for COVID vaccines to be approved. And uh, did we compromise in the clinical trials? Did we um, give anything unsafe to people? Uh, it, and do you, un do you know that there's such a thing called um, pandemic special access route, PISA, that was given by the Health Science Authority to enable us to get quick access to the COVID vaccines in this period. So all this process is highly co complex. Uh, and this is what you will cover uh, to help you understand the whole continuum of drug discovery and development process. And, and so is pharmaceutical science relevant to Singapore? You may ask, do we need a major, a whole major to study this area? And the answer of course is yes. Yeah, if you look at the footprint uh, of pharmaceutical industry in Singapore, 
as shown on this diagram, you can see that all over Singapore, we are dotted by companies, medical, manufacturing, and uh, not just manufacturing, but also headquarters, commercial functions, etc. And on the west of Singapore, as you have seen in Tuas, uh, we, we are well covered by, um, by manufacturing sites. Eight of the 10 international largest pharmaceutical firms are based in Singapore. And in 1990s, the government has, um, has decided that this would be a very important economic pillar. And although we are actively, we have been actively manufacturing uh, what we call API, active pharmaceutical ingredients, uh, in, in Singapore for the last 20, 30 years. Recently, we have seen a lot more other activities like discovery and, um, and, and regulatory functions, commercial functions in Singapore. There are also many regional headquarters uh, in, uh, and of largest drug companies now based in Singapore. So uh, over here, you see uh, about 50 odd companies uh, present, pharmaceutical firms present now in companies. So is, is, is this going to end? Is this going to, uh, is this like the sunset industry? Will it ever have that kind of fate? The answer is no. In fact, the pharma industry is here to stay. And we have already seen during this pandemic that while everything is powering down, the pharmaceutical industry is powering up. Um, and, and in 2019, as you have seen, that our pharma exports actually is $8.1 billion, whereas the import uh, amounts to something like 3.1 billion. So this extremely positive excess of trade shows how important this is uh, to, to the country. In fact, uh, Singapore, being such a small country, actually uh, supports the manufacture of uh, a lot of active pharmaceutical ingredients that are distributed by uh, uh, US, Japan, and, and Europe. They're being synthesized here, exported out and packed into tablets, capsules, uh, injections outside and brought it back in again. And you can see that uh, because of our extremely good infrastructure, uh, our, our country is a draw for pharmaceutical giants. You might have also heard that uh, we're building two new uh, vaccines plants uh, in, in the next four or five years. And, and this is not going to stop. The pharma industry uh, is definitely here uh, to stay in Singapore. So what, is the, what are the unique features of our course uh, in, in this case? What is it like stepping into a pharmaceutical science class? Uh, as you have seen already, the numbers, uh, we're actually a relatively small class compared to um, uh, other majors. And what this allows us is uh, to conduct collaborative and team-based learning. Uh, our students are all put in teams uh, and, and they will spend a lot of time uh, discussing and uh, working on problems uh, with, with in a team-based environment. And what this allows is for them uh, to have a deeper dialogue between themselves and between uh, with the instructors. This team-based approach is, is really very central to the pharmaceutical industry. And also we adopt the most modern pedagogy. Uh, most of our modules are, adopt, uh, are conducted in blended learning. Uh, and our uh, class uh, it's, uh, have integrated knowledge. Our questions are problem solving skills. They are case studies. Uh, students usually ask professors for 10 year series practice questions, uh, but uh, this, this is uh, rather uh, foreign to us because each question is, is a case study and the case study is always relevant because we uh, also have practitioners from the industry coming to, to teach our students so that we can be relevant and stay ahead of the curve. And uh, the course is structured such that uh, it is very internship uh, and experiential learning uh, friendly. Uh, most of our students have already taken uh, at least one internship throughout the course uh, and uh, they can choose between a variety of three months to six months credited at the same time uh, that they are working, this is credited. So they do not waste any time at all or have to stay, uh, uh, stay back, uh, be held back because of internship. And, and we believe, uh, my colleagues and I believe that integration of knowledge is key. Uh, the, our unique difference from chemistry and biology is, is that uh, all our knowledge is integrated. The central pillar of our study is drugs, medicines, medical products. 
And to understand that, uh, students actually are introduced uh, in the foundation years uh, how to integrate. We call this the elements, ABC elements of integration, whereby we integrate chemistry and biology. So students understand uh, how a small molecule, a chemical, interacts with the molecules of life to give us the actions that we desire and how we can change the molecule to, to, in order to alter the reaction in the human body. And, and we also integrate a chemistry of analysis whereby students look at the molecule and they learn to analyze, not just for chemistry's sake, but also uh, according to standards that are required by the pharmaceutical industries. And, and finally, biology is integrated analysis. We look at bio uh, macromolecules. We look at macromolecules, not just as molecules of life itself, but we look at them as drugs and as vaccines. And we teach students how to analyze, analyze them, modify them for better reaction, better action. Just take an example, DNA, RNA. So what you have done so far mostly is that it is a biomolecule that helps you uh, in replication, transcription, translation to give us proteins in the body. But in this course, we also look, uh, in fact, in, in, in the whole department, every molecule that we look at is to us a drug, an opportunity to be a drug. A DNA, RNA can be a drug to, to alter uh, the genetic makeup, right? To cure a uh, single mutation disease. Now we all know that DNA, RNA is also a vaccine. It's not just a biomarker molecule. And do you know also that DNA can be uh, modified to, to make origami, to make arrays, all these little dots that you see on the diagnostic is a DNA strand that has reacted with another DNA molecule to give us a light on, on this screen. And so, um, and again, do you, then how do we pack it, right? You know that you know you learn from biology, DNA, RNA, it's extremely labile. They are very susceptible to enzyme degradation. So how do we actually make it stable and then inject it in our body and become a vaccine to mount a reaction? What do we add inside? What excipients, right? We call it excipients inactive ingredients. You know that the vaccine uh, in Moderna and Pfizer actually has cholesterol in there. What is cholesterol doing in the vaccine bottle, right? Do you know that we are uh, now, the vaccines are distributed as a liquid, so it has to be used so quickly by cold chain. What is cold chain, right? It has to be frozen and quickly thawed and after quickly thawed has to be used immediately, all these. But the problem can be solved. Uh, in fact, the industry is looking at it if we freeze dry it. So what does it mean by freeze drying? And then how do we test for quality that every bottle that we make uh, passes the quality control according to, to world standards, uh, FDA standards, etc. cetera. And, and again, because DNA is so unusual, it's not, it's not this usual small molecule or chemicals that we're used to like paracetamol, aspirin, are they regulated the same way? Do you know they are regulated as biologics and there are special license and applications that you can apply for? And soon, when, when this pandemic is over and when patents runs out, will there be other cheaper versions called biosimilars and biobetters? So it's, it's, it's a holistic knowledge that we are trying to communicate and trying to teach uh, in this course. And uh, it is really very exciting knowledge that is not covered by any other departments, uh, I would say. And on top of the integration of knowledge, we also believe uh, in internship placements, as I mentioned, experiential learning, it's, it's very important. And uh, studies or research has shown that uh, if you have done internship, uh, you do have a better chance of getting a job uh, when you graduate. And we have a track record. All our students have been placed very successfully, uh, not just in Big Pharma, the names that you recognize like GSK, MSD, AstraZeneca, uh, but also uh, we have very adventurous students we have who, who are not afraid of hardships or not afraid of learning new things. Uh, and they have gone into startups, they have gone into digital health, they've gone to research institutes. And, and so we are looking at uh, more varieties of uh, companies that we can place our students in uh, that will be related to the healthcare. So, and, and because this year is the first year that our students will graduate, right? So I can't give you uh, hard data about where they have gone. Uh, and these are careers that uh, have, uh, with descriptions that I have taken from internships, it's not titles that I have dreamed up. And, uh, and it includes very exciting areas like regulatory affairs, medical affairs, marketing, sales, 
and not just that, but also in um, experimental product innovation sciences. And uh, our graduating class, some of them have already um, found uh, placements in Duke and US, for example. Some have been offered jobs already before they graduate in the startup companies. And uh, some are considering graduate school to get a PhD uh, to, to do a uh, drug, to become a pharmaceutical scientist uh, in, in essence. So there are many more uh, areas that uh, I have not included, but uh, I think that there are many careers uh, that students have not been um, exposed to, uh, that pharmaceutical science will be able to open up this world for you. And, and so I'm, I'm uh, almost to the end of my uh, talk, and this is in, in essence the summary of uh, our program. It is the four-year direct admission honors degree. Uh, it is flexible, it is student-centric, and again, uh, the hallmark, the central hallmark is that it is an integrative uh, course. It is interdisciplinary and yet niche in the pharmaceutical science area. Uh, we also believe firmly in experiential learning and our course is structured so that you'll be able to, to explore uh, in, in your four years, uh, different areas. And we really hope that we can help uh, students uh, shorten this exploratory process and to help them do it during the course rather than after they graduate. And in, in, uh, in, 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 at the end of it, we are hoping uh, that we, our students will have an enhanced career option. So if you're ready for this challenge, we really do welcome you and hope that you will join us today. So thank you very much. Uh, I will stop here now. Uh, and, and next I would like to introduce to you uh, two students, uh, both uh, Yi Ying, who is a fourth year student and uh, Jeannie, who is a sec uh, third year student. They will share with you more what they have done throughout the career. So you know that I'm actually not making this up uh, and, and let me stop share. Okay. E. Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. Thank you for taking your time to attend this sharing of life as a pharmaceutical science undergraduate. Today, Jenny and I will be sharing about our experience as a farm science PHS in short student. So first of all, sorry, uh, next slide. So first of all, why PHS? Firstly, if your career aspiration is to work in a pharma company, medtech, biotech or healthcare industry, but not as a healthcare professional, this may be the cause for you. Secondly, is the breadth of study to have more unrestricted electives compared to our pharmacy curriculum, so as to pursue a second major or a minor to explore your other interests. Thirdly, is the depth of study to pursue deeper into science and less of the clinical therapeutics. Lastly, it is the flexible opportunities to go for an overseas exchange and internships as well. A quick sharing about myself. Uh, I'm a final year student doing my final year project at Genus, studying tablet formulation. In my four years as an undergraduate, I was also an intern at GSK and MHC Asia. I also picked up commitments within school to be part of the marketing committee of NUS Pharmaceutical Society and to be an orientation camp leader. Throughout these four years, I've experienced a lot. In year one, I attended the orientation camp where I met many friends and created strong bonds with my peers to go through these four years with. And this is very important to have a strong support group to study together and help each other. In year two, I was at OGL where I met more people and experienced more things, which was really fun and memorable, which to, the, which to this date, I hold these memories closely to my heart, which I hope the COVID situation will allow this batch of new undergraduates to experience the orientation camp. In my final two years, COVID struck, and hence the must. Also, there was more lab work. And to the right is me doing my final year project. So um, this slide shows all the machine I've used during my final year project, whereby we have machines to characterize our material of interest, also machines to make tablets and machines to characterize the tablets that I've made. Here's a photo of one of my magnesium steroid, a commonly used lubricant in the tablet making. And using a scanning electron microscope, I took a picture of it and had to size it afterwards. 
So beyond school curriculum, I also part of the ACADCOM, inviting guest speakers from the industry to share about their experience with the undergraduate, which was very insightful to hear directly from the industry experts. I also had my internship at MHC Asia, where I was a market strategy intern. And yes, I had to write a report of almost 15,000 words. But on, at the same time, I also managed to pick up several key skills like Excel skill, and one of them is pivot table, which I find very useful even till today. I also work closely with several, doc several doctors to provide care for our patients, as well as creating a chronic disease management program for three disease state with the doctors. Lastly, one of the most fulfilling thing was that I was also able to provide care for our patients in terms of understanding their symptoms and ensure that their medication reach on time. Afterwards, I had an internship with GSK as a, a medical affairs intern, where I liaised with various functions, mainly in the marketing and regulatory function, to ensure any materials that goes out of GSK is substantiated with evidence and reference. So beyond being a medical affairs intern, I also reached out to the marketing area manager. And from there, I was um, in the marketing team as well as um, in the medical affairs teams. So there's no need to be afraid to ask to try out other functions when you're in your internship. So as you can learn more and explore your interests, your strengths and your weaknesses. And this internship opportunities really exposed me to the working world and the corporate world. And all this brings me to the benefit of PHS, scientific communication. Due to the small size and fleet classroom learning, we had a lot of presentation to prepare for and to hone our communication skills. We were also given the opportunity to have extensive networks to our professors and some industry experts. And the curriculum has also allowed us to hone our communication skills and problem solving skills. So now I'll pass on my time to Jenny, who will be sharing more about her experience. Thanks, Ying. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeannie, and I'm very happy to be here with you today to share with you my experience so far as a pharmaceutical science student. So first, starting with why I wanted to be a pharmaceutical science student. Coming from JC, I didn't really have a very clear idea of what I wanted to pursue in university. And I think that maybe some of you will find yourself in a similar situation right now. But what I did know was that I was good at chemistry and that I wanted to study something that was related to the medicine and healthcare sector, but I wasn't very interested in the clinical practice side of things. Then pharmaceutical science presented itself as the perfect solution. And one of the major benefits I found is that whilst the course definitely goes in depth into the study of drug discovery and development and the regulatory environment in the industry, it is still flexible in the sense that we have quite a number of unrestricted electives, which allows us to make full use of the opportunities presented to us to pursue our own interests and really take charge of our learning in university. Now I'll share a little bit more about my key experiences and major milestones I've had so far. Starting from the beginning in year one, I had a memorable introduction to the department through the pharmacy orientation activities and in particular, pharmacy RAG. Um, if you're not aware, RAG is um, a university-wide event which each faculty will put up a dance performance, mostly performed by freshmen. And through pharmacy RAG, I got to meet fellow freshmen and made so many friends before I even started university. I experienced firsthand the vibrant pharmacy spirit and really got a chance to blend with classmates through the pains of training and the feeling of accomplishment when we finished the performance. RAG made such a big impact on me that I decided to join the organizing committee as vice project director the year after to replicate the experience I had from my juniors. And so for those of you who do end up joining PHS, I would highly encourage you to join RAG as well for an unforgettable orientation experience. Moving on to the modules, they're really comprehensive, covering topics such as medicinal chemistry, pharmaceutical biotechnology, pharmaceutical analysis, and so on. And for those of you who might be worried because you, like me, did not study bio and JC, I'm telling you now from personal experience that there really is no need to worry because the course is structured in such a way that will be provided with the fundamental, fundamental knowledge required. And yeah, it's definitely manageable. So in terms of the mods, my favorite modules so far have been PHS 2191 and 3191, which are fully lab-based modules. Yes, we did have six hours straight lab sessions, but time really flies because there's a lot to learn. And in these two modules, we are introduced to chemistry and biology lab techniques, such as chemical synthesis and metabolic assays. And we get the chance to design and perform our own experiments using techniques and equipment that are actually used in the pharmaceutical industry today. 
And so now I'd like to take a moment to talk about Europe, which is an undergraduate research program. And I decided to take it last semester as an unrestricted elective on top of my core modules. I did my Europe project under Prof. Rachel E's lab, actually, and I'll say it's one of the best decisions I've made so far in uni. My research was on the investigation of endotoxin trapping using bacteria responsive peptides, which may also be applied in enhancing antimicrobial activity of antibiotics. Through Europe's, I got to experience conducting my own literature research and designing my own experiments. And I learned many useful skills such as key lab techniques, technical report writing. Yes, I did write a 25 page report and also scientific presentation skills. The whole process of conducting my own research showed me the importance of having problem solving and critical thinking skills. And it also the highlighted the importance of having resilience because after all, you're investigating in a new area and a lot of the time you may not get the results that you want. Um, through Europe, I learned a lot from working with my mentor and other members of the lab. And I would highly recommend Europe to everyone as it's a good opportunity to experience self-directed research. And maybe you'll discover whether research is a field you'd like to be in in the future. Finally, we caught up to where I am now. I'm currently on an internship with, sorry, I'm currently on internship with AstraZeneca International. And again, this internship also counts towards my unrestricted electives. My role is as a launch excellence project coordinator for one of the company's leading cancer drugs called Limpaza. So here you can see an article published by AstraZeneca about this drug. So far, this internship has given me a completely different experience, um, perspective of the pharmaceutical industry because I'm working in the commercial department. So what this means is that I'm learning a lot more about the regulatory and business aspect of the processes involved when a new drug enters the market. For example, some of my key responsibilities involve liaising with international markets daily to provide support for drug product launch and working with internal and external stakeholders to organize training sessions and awareness campaigns um, to keep international counterparts updated on key initiatives. I'm only 1.5 months in now, but I'm already starting to get used to keeping up with the fast pace of the commercial environment. So as you can see in my two and a half years in PHS so far, I've had a diversity of experience and this is thanks to the many opportunities made available to us in this major. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ginny and Yiying. Yeah, if you could unshare a sweet. Yeah, so um, I, I'm so happy to hear from them uh, that the, the journey is so diverse and so varied. And uh, for, for us as faculty, what we do is really mentorship. Uh, of course, uh, there are um, uh, many other departments in, in NUS, but I think what is important besides transmitting knowledge is also the strong ecosystem and support system that, uh, that uh, you need from, from uh, your major. And this is what uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, our mentorship system here and our small classes allow us to form this very intimate relationship between our students and our faculty. So um, I, I would just stop right here and invite any questions that you may have. Uh, I have many colleagues here with me uh, and also uh, Ying and Jenny would, uh, can also support me in answering any questions regarding the student life. Yeah. Yeah, so if uh, you have questions, uh, if you prefer, you can type it into the chat. Uh, and I will address it. Uh, and, and also, uh, if you're comfortable, you may also uh, just unmute yourself and ask any questions uh, directly. Okay. Uh, yes, I have a question now uh, in the chat that asks, uh, is it possible to venture into non-pharmaceutical companies with this degree, for example, cosmetic industry? Answer is yes, definitely. So um, what, what happens is that a lot of our students a lot of our students have also uh, gone into uh, food and uh, cosmetics, you're right. Uh, and, and because the knowledge is very relevant uh, and, and as you can, as you already know that the drug industry is, is the most stringent in terms of regulatory, um, et cetera. And, and so uh, if you learn the most stringent, uh, then it is not difficult. Uh, if you want to approach uh, issues, for example, in cosmetics, uh, um, yeah, uh, skin and formulation example, creams, making creams, making preparations uh, for cosmetics. It's definitely relevant. Um, 
Uh, then there's a question about what percentage of cohort continue to do PhD studies because our uh, I can't really answer this because uh, our first batch has not graduated, but I do know that uh, we have about, uh, let's say, uh, five out of 30, about, yeah, the, the 20 percent, uh, 20 odd percent preparing uh, to do PhD studies. Um, that means uh, we actually do give uh, uh, symposium and seminars about how to prepare uh, for application to US schools, to Europe schools, uh, what do you need to do to get there? Yeah. Um, is it possible to, to handle exchange programs with internship together in pharmaceutical science? Uh, I, and I, I suppose exchange meaning uh, overseas exchange. Uh, currently, at this moment, uh, we do, if you go under the SEP student exchange program, uh, it is purely academic uh, and, and not internship based. Uh, but there's another program in NUS called NOC, NUS Overseas College, whereby you can actually go overseas to work in uh, companies. Uh, this is a, a quite a well-developed program that our farm school science students, uh, one of our students are currently actually in Sweden doing this with a startup. Yeah, so I, I would say under that uh, program, it is possible exchange with internship. Um, uh, oh, and I have a question probably with Jeannie and, and uh, Ying. Uh, if, did, do you guys uh, uh, consider life science. What what did what made you apply for pharmaceutical science instead of life science? Could you help me out here? Um, okay, maybe I'll start first as to mm -hmm. why I chose uh, farm science over mm -hmm. life science. So, I guess first of all, uh, would be uh the pharmaceutical industry is uh more appealing in a sense whereby you know whatever you're doing will help out patients ultimately, which is my goal when I first entered to help out patient whether be it in any process of the drug development process. And also life science because um, there's a lot of, um, in terms of like, you have to choose your own module. So it's quite unstructured in a sense. And we, although you go in, like there's a lot of options that you can further pursue in life science, but for farm science, it's more uh, structured in a way whereby things goes uh, in the pharma industry, which is what appealed to me more than life science. And secondly, I guess it's because uh, the, my A-level score was able to enter farm science and I just applied and I got in. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's another main reason for me. I think for me, um... The main reason why I chose farm science over life science is because it's more specific. And like, so when you study farm science, you're not only learning about like the science aspect of it, but you're also learning about like the regulatory environment, like of, so in a way you'll be able to go in any part of that industry. And I think if maybe working with drugs is something that you're interested in, you know that you're interested in, it would be a better option for you because it's more specific in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and um, also there are questions uh, about uh, choosing between pharmacy and pharmaceutical science. It's a quite common question that we, we get. Uh, and, and pharmacy is not under uh, CHS because uh, it is uh, a healthcare degree. Uh, the primary objective is to produce students who will practice as, uh, as pharmacists, clinical pharmacists. They will get a license. So the training, uh, in the training, there's uh, included a, a pre-registration training whereby they work in the hospitals to, be, to, to get registered uh, as a pharmacist. So is there overlap? Uh, and the curriculum answer is no, because uh, there, the, there is a... Um, major change in curriculum in the Bachelor of Pharmacy and it's uh, very it's integrated in a different way. It does not follow the CHS curriculum at all. Uh, and uh, answers, uh, can you go to Duke NUS for medicine? Uh, we already have one student being, uh, being a second to Duke NUS. Uh, so answer is yes. Um, and um, so basically Duke NUS is a graduate medical degree. That means they take uh, students who 
have already a bachelor's in something and it's, it's not restricted. It could be engineer, it could be a business, it could be uh, pharmacy, it could be pharmaceutical science and, and uh, it's, it's through interview process. So answer is uh, yes, uh, you can uh, apply for doing rest after your first degree. Uh, and will there be an interview process for pharmaceutical science? Answer is no. Uh, admission is uh, based on uh, IGP. Uh, and, and of course, uh, if you choose uh, pharmaceutical science as the first major, you do have bonus points uh, and, and that would help uh, students uh, in getting uh, their first choice. Um, all right, let, let me just have a quick look uh, at, at the other questions. So uh, if, if you, uh, some, someone asked if you need, if you want to venture into drug R&D, do you need at least a master's in some science? Uh, the question is uh, yes and no. It depends. It depends on what function you want to be involved in uh, R and D. Uh, we have students who have done internship in uh, companies like Merck, MSD, as a research scientist. Uh, and in in the research R and D, there are actually many levels. Yeah, so uh, you can actually enter R and D as a research associate, uh, and from from there. Uh, you may decide uh, after looking at the environment that you want to do a higher degree after that. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, a higher degree will allow you uh, to, to have uh, uh, a more, a stronger function uh, in the company. Um, uh, okay, so uh, the about the number of students being uh, accepted into uh, farm science as first major, we uh, expect uh, probably uh, at the, they will hold at about 60, but uh, we currently do not know. It really depends on the cohort and the number of applicants. Uh, and as a second major, because we just started last year, it was approved last year as a second major. So uh, we are waiting uh, for this semester to end to see how many uh, uh, students actually apply for second major. Um, so uh, I, I do not know uh, currently uh, what will the, the number be. Uh, so the, the thing about second major, I forgot to mention, is that you do have to decide at the end of your second semester. Uh, we do not accept uh, anything after that. Yeah. So uh, if you consider, you want to consider it as a second major, please um, register for PHS 1101, uh, either in semester one or semester two. Uh, PHS 1101 uh, is offered uh, in every semester. Uh, and by semester two uh, of your year one, you will have to put in an application. Uh, uh, that would be the final deadline. Yeah. Uh, so for, for first major, you have to uh, apply as the direct admission. Uh, second major, you can do it later uh, after you have done the gateway module. And of course, minor, you can also indicate it later after uh, you have considered, after you have taken some of our modules, our gateway module. So uh, this is not at the point of admission. Uh, let me just take a look. Uh, also, other questions. Um, um, right, uh, that there is... Um, there is a, a question about uh, decision between pharmacy and pharmaceutical science. Uh, I, I think that the two causes are distinctly different. Uh, the career trajectory is also very different. Pharmacy, as I mentioned, is a clinical degree. You, you would need to like working with people, working with patients, interacting with them, uh, teaching them about drug use, about medication, um, uh, uh, counseling, et cetera. Uh, so that aspect of the clinical uh, pharmacy has, has really has to be clear. Uh, in pharmaceutical science, you do not get the license. We are not really uh, get towards a clinical career. Uh, instead, uh, we are focused in um, to produce sci uh, scientists and practitioners for the industry. But again, uh, the pharmaceutical scientist is not limited to pharmaceutical industry. They do have options in uh, associated related area like health tech, cosmetics, and uh, even uh, food. Uh, so I think it is uh, 
uh, advisable that you speak to uh, our colleagues or any one of us uh, if they're still unclear between the two. Um, whether you can uh, transfer between the two, again, uh, only limited numbers uh, of students with good performance will be considered for the transfer and also in the first year of the study. Uh, beyond that, we, we do not uh, actually consider any transfers for year twos onwards. Um, there's a question about double major options uh, for farm science. Uh, it is unlimited, yeah, because of the structure of uh, CHS, um, you could take any double major combinations uh, as long as it's available in the university, yeah. Um, so um, there's, there's also a question uh, about, uh, again, again, uh, about farm, farm science graduates will not be able to be a pharmacist. Absolutely not. Uh, if you do not have a license, if you do not go through, if you do not have a Bachelor of Pharmacy degree, you cannot be a pharmacist. Uh, you probably have to uh, study uh, pharmacy all over again to, to be licensed. Uh, and um, for, for, however, for a pharmacist, uh, there are, uh, it is possible that uh, that you transit to pharmaceutical R&D, of course, with the uh, higher training. Uh, this is possible. Um, uh, it's, 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 uh, the course, there are quite a lot of questions about research. Uh, we do have a, a strong research component uh, in pharmaceutical science because we think that research, uh, it's uh, important. It is uh, a very creative process and it is uh, a problem solving uh, process. So uh, for our bench work, uh, it is consolidated in uh, what Jeannie has mentioned, this course, uh, courses PHS 2191 and 3191. Uh, and, and for UROPS and FYP, uh, currently under CHS curriculum, it is elective. Uh, you can choose to do it if you're interested. If not, you can always do an internship. Uh, with a company. Uh, and is there a lot of memory work? Uh, as I mentioned, in pharmaceutical science, our approach is very integrative. Uh, it's memory work probably will not get you too far because you need to learn how to apply the knowledge. Yeah. So not just knowing the knowledge, but also uh, learning to apply it, uh, answering uh, 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 to be uh, integrative, uh, you know, trying to use chemistry and, and biology uh, and physical sciences to, to solve a problem related to the drug. Of course, it, it is quite a new experience we notice for our students uh, uh, because it is not the approach that is not quite common approach that is being adopted in uh, your, your college days, junior college days, but uh, do not worry. Of course, we will guide you through the process and after four years, you'll be very good at problem solving. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm aware of, uh, of the time. Uh, if you have any other questions, do feel free to connect with us uh, under this uh, uh, email called askfarmscienceandusedu.sg. Uh, but before you leave, I, I would really uh, love to hear from you. Uh, our administrator is going to run a very quick poll about how uh, you find our sessions. And that's definitely, there are a lot of improvements to be made. Uh, uh, I would uh, um, appeal to you to help us uh, do this quick poll before you exit this session. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm so happy to see you here and I hope you will choose us as your first choice and are waiting to welcome you into the department. Thank you very much. <laughs>